what's going on everybody <clears throat> it's Saturday morning race is next weekend we learned a ton at the last race so this video is going to be our updates before the next race pretty much what we're gonna do in this one is we got rear rear we got real splitter rods rather than just that piece of sheet metal we have so here's all the pieces we're gonna we're gonna do something interesting on these to make them give in a upward direction in case like I go off track or hit the curbing the splitter has a little bit of give upward but it's solid in a downward you know downforce direction um, so that should be pretty neat and then the other thing we're gonna do is uh, got the one right here here's the other one we're gonna do longer and stiffer oops longer and stiffer bump stops <clears throat> so if you watched some of our older episodes when I did the springs I did put stiffer bump stops in but I think they're a little bit too short so when the front end compresses and the rear end lifts that's why the splitter is still able to kind of hit the ground so they're so cheap we're gonna try that out before we try and do anything a little bit crazier like a third spring or something like that so let's get to it this is kind of cool I just opened up the garage door and I'll see what I'll show you what we found I don't know if this is it looks like it shows up on camera but you can see because the last race was in the rain just the dirt and dust making like the the streaks come across the the, the wing there's some you know there's some more there there's some more there and what's actually kind of cool about this is towards the end it gets a little bit bigger but it doesn't really just like stop or you know get like washed out or anything so we can actually see that we got good you know flow attachment the whole way of the wing so that's kind of cool you know whenever you do a race in the rain you can kind of see what the stuff's doing and if you saw in the last video that little snippet of the spray coming out from underneath of the car you know you you know downforce is being generated all right guys so as you can see our original hole in the splitter right here and we did this at the track. We just put some nut certs in our cross beam and ran some steel straps. So these are meant to go there and all the way up to that hole. As you can see, they're much too short. So what I'm gonna do is kind of cut it in half and put, put a larger sleeve over it that will lock in the downward direction under downforce, but if I hit the curbing or a or you know go off track or something it'll give upward a little bit and that sleeve the space between will kind of allow that to compress if that makes sense so we're gonna jump into doing that first and and see what we get out of it but very first thing we need to do is where all these nut certs are we did three of them across the bumper is I don't know maybe a half inch three quarters of an inch so these if we just put them right on it the bumper would be too close. We want to make some sort of a quick pin release with these guys right here. So, I'll just do it with a blank one at the moment. They have these little retainer ball on the end and when you press the button, it allows it to slip in and not, not come out. When this whole setup is up here, we kind of need it away from the bumper a tiny bit to be able to make room I guess this one would go this way to make room for these quick pin setups so what we're gonna do is actually weld a little tiny extension off of this longer than we need we're gonna then put the bumper on the car cut it flush so then these can just kind of attach to that maybe I don't know half inch three quarters of an inch off of the reinforcement beam guys so as you can see on this splitter rod there isn't a clevis on the one end now in the notes Pete was Pete's the owner of fully torqued racing where I got these um, he was super nice about it I told him to kind of leave the pins out but a little miscommunication on my end I wasn't quite clear enough um, because I want to use those quick pins I showed you earlier the clevis didn't come with it so he was super cool about it sent them out the day I got these so they'll be here in a day or two 
problem is I kind of want to do my mock-ups now. So what I'm going to do is press the clevis off of one end to kind of make a complete rod. Do my mock-up across all of them so when the other clevises get here, bolt them on, ready to go. So um, the other thing to note about these is they are sold in pairs. So don't be like me and order six. Order as many as you need. Um, again, I told Pete if he blacklists me as a customer for not seeing that they were ordered in pairs and not being quite clear enough on leaving the pin out. But um, yeah, these things are awesome. So if you need splitter rods, definitely check them out. All right, so I already got this one started by kind of getting it in, in the vise. I want to try and hammer it out the rest of the way. You want to be really careful to support this if you ever have to press these out because you can see it's a little bit thin on these tabs right here. Plenty strong enough to hold how these things are supposed to work but if you're tapping it out and you end up cranking on this the wrong way you could break one of these ears off. All right, so here you can see our finished mounting lug, I guess we'll, we'll call it. You know, I'll, I'll paint them real quick. Um, but I'll show you kind of the whole idea is the hardware that comes with it, I wanted to reuse. I could have maybe did a bolt from the rear through this whole thing, but since this tube is rounded, it could have maybe made it like pivot or not as strong so that's kind of why I wanted to just weld a lug onto it the bolt comes in from the back side and then these clevises are threaded and then I'm gonna modify an Allen wrench short enough to get behind there to hold it tighten it down and there you go so now when I put the bumper on I'm obviously gonna have to like clearance the holes the bumper will kind of land right about here the rod, which will stay part of the splitter, will fold up, quick pin goes on, and you're ready to go. Alright, so there you can see how the top's going to work. And then we want to reutilize our old holes from the, I guess from the side angle, you can kind of see we're a little ways away. So at this point, we're going to cut the rod in half add our sleeve and pins that allow it to go in an upward direction but be you know solid in a downward direction so let's get these modified and go from there what i'm going to do is mark them so that way because there's left hand thread and right hand thread I honestly don't know which is which, so it's just going to be A, B, C, or, you know, let's do one. This one will be twos. And then these, they're freaking hot. One, two, three. One, two, three. So that way when I put them together, I won't have to be finding the left hand threads and right hand threads for, for all of them. All right, so here you can see how we have the two halves kind of mocked up. And there's about an inch and a half or whatever in the middle here. So this is where we're gonna make that outer sleeve to basically keep these in line with each other. And then we'll add our pins to add or you know to make it make it solid again all right so kind of our first initial test fit this 
outer sleeve just happens to be you know just over a half of an inch while the rods are exactly like 500 thousandths so it's snug but not so snug it binds so what we want to do is pretty much make it solid on this top half of the rod the bottom half of the rod we're going to put a tension pin through it and slot this outer sleeve and that slot is what's going to allow this to go upwards if it ends up hitting something. If you're not familiar with what a tension pin is, it's this little pin with a slot in it that's slightly oversized for whatever hole it goes in. So literally just the, the tension is what holds it in. That's it for that. So I'm bottomed out, I'll go ahead and just kind of, when it's off the car, tap it, tap it in, and we'll have a tiny, tiny bit coming out of both ends. So now we're going to want to mark and drill the bottom. I have this here so I know how much room I have to play with. We'll probably start, I don't know, a half inch, maybe an inch up, and we're going to give ourselves about an inch slot. If this splitter <laughs> rises up more than an inch, we got other issues, so that should be plenty. All right, so that's all we want. We only want that one little hole in the aluminum rod. What we're gonna do is take it back apart and then put our slot in the outer sleeve. So like I mentioned earlier, at this point, we wanna take the lower rod out because we only want the one hole. So the tension pin is what can kind of slide up and in the slot. So now we're gonna, oops. So now we're just going to mark this out, uh, cut our slot, and then basically do our final install. happy with our loose test fit now we're gonna try our spring just just starts to get tension on it before we put the pin in we're just gonna deburr this and clean it up a little bit all right so what we're gonna do is put the spring in to give it that little bit of tension Now, we cut these right in half. I want to do a quick little measurement. Aluminum rod should be there. This one comes into there. All right, so should be okay. So fully compressed, that spring isn't giving us enough distance. So I think I'm going to chop this down a little bit. All right, so we just shortened this a little bit. Uh, the spring is still inside. If you ever, if you cut this too short, you could always almost space it back out, like shim it out by putting, you know, some washers or a nut in there to hold that tension. Kind of like I just did. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm gonna go find some washers or a nut. All right, so basically an unflanged quarter 20 nut fits right on in there. And you probably can't see it from the camera, but it's sitting uh, flush. There we go. So we, we're just starting to get, to get tension as the hole lines up on the end. 
should have close to full compression. Okay. Alright, so we're going to go with that. I think that should be good. Alright, so here they all are. Um, started taping them up because I'm going to paint them, obviously. I made sure that the reverse thread uh, rod end is the slotted end on all of them, just so they're all the same. But again, as you can see, we'll do a quick little compression test. You know, so holds it firm in tension but gives us that little bit of give again. The other thing, uh, real quick to note, that I'm sure some people might ask is these little tension pins. Since they're in double shear, they have a rating of like 4,200 pounds or something, so I'm not worried about these at all, so we should be fine there. So, <sighs> all right, so that's about it for the um, splitter rods at the moment. Uh, we're going to shift gears a little bit and now we're going to get started on putting the longer bump stops in. All right, guys so we just took off these were what was uh, I put on the car for the first event these these foam ones here you can see how soft they are these are what was on the car when I was in American iron trim so these kind of I, I knew they wouldn't work so I put these on but as you can see they're a little bit shorter so the car was probably compressing too much and that was some of the cause of the the splitter dragging I had these laying around which are a pretty stiff pretty solid rubber but again as you can see they're a little bit shorter so I ended up buying these honestly I don't even know what company I, I just went to Summit for these um, as you can see much much taller so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna just kinda like trim them to the height that we want and we can always trim them more. These things are so cheap, we can kind of, you know, get new ones if we end up missing it or destroying them, whatever. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to kind of modify these. And something, something that I did, something that I did off camera was before I lifted the car up, I measured how much room we had between the when when the car is under its own weight how much room we had between the bump stop and everything so did a little bit of math thinking about that to kind of get an idea of the bump stop height so you know it, it's kind of like anything we're going to try it out and see what happens at the first event <clears throat> also the the other person i got to thank for the bump stop idea if you watch if you watched a couple episodes ago when I did the stiffer springs, I was on the right track putting in bump stops, but I just kind of undershot it. I talked to Will All Young from, he's got that Time Attack Civic. Anybody who's big in the Time Attack world knows who he is. He's not just like setting front wheel drive records, but like outright track records with this thing. Crazy arrow in the car. I talked to him and he's the one who said, you know, yeah, bump stops are what he runs. When a car becomes so aero dependent you almost just like ride around on your bump stops I know it sounds a little bit weird and crazy but once you start getting to that level of downforce you want the car to kind of take a set under load and then almost stay there so will if you're watching this thank you all right let's get to modifying these so we know we want right around a two inch tall bump stop maybe two and an eighth so 2.125 brings us to about the middle of this ridge. So what we're just going to do is just kind of lop off the soft bit uh, or, you know, the, the small bit um, and then just run them like that. 
One last thing to note about these is they are uh, like really firm. Um, they're, they're soft, medium, hard. There's even different durometers. These ones are the, you know, the, the hardest on the scale. So as you can see, like this one I can squeeze really easy. This one I can move a little bit, but, but not much. So that should help out too. All right guys, so the paint has dried on the rods. You can see here, we got all three of them ready to go. Here's the, uh, I guess I'll call them horns or extensions or whatever you wanna call them, um, that the top's gonna bolt to. Unfortunately, the, the little bit of the mix up uh, without getting the three clevises, I'm gonna have to fabricate something for the lower that'll get me through the weekend until the nicer hardware shows up. All right, so I did Loctite, the bolt that goes through from the inside. And then here you can see the Allen wrench that I shortened to get up and in there. And under time lapse, real quick, you can see this little notch that I put in here. So that way I can kind of get enough swing of this thing to come back around and get the next one. So I didn't quite anticipate that, but you know, easy enough little fix, everything's tight. Now what we gotta do is take the bumper. We have the holes my makeshift holes from last race so I'm gonna slide it up we're gonna have to clearance these out a little bit just to make it around the upper mounts and then we should be all done uh, ju I just thought of something real quick the last race was in the rain so our full treads are out I'm gonna go get the um, RR's out of the trailer we're gonna put them on put this thing on the ground it's actually easier to get the splitter on the car while it's on the ground. Um, so we're gonna do that, put it on the ground. Um, the other reason I like doing everything while the car is on the ground, like this car is a little bit of a pain to jack up. I showed you those jacking lugs that I did earlier. Um, but if you work on it while it's on the ground, you fabricate the mounts to work while it's on the ground so you don't have to lift the car up just to get a bolt under the splitter or something, something like that. I hope that kind of makes sense. Just kind of something I do. Uh, makes it a little bit easier, I think. So let's go grab the tires, put them on, drop this baby down. All right, guys. So my solution for the, uh, you know, the missing clevises, I just took some one-inch flat stock, uh, five sixteenths hole on one side, quarter inch on the other. That'll make sense in a second. What we're gonna do is just bend this into an L. One side will go down on the splitter, and then the side that comes up will be a single shear joint with the rod end. All right guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of our splitter biscuits. We're gonna put them underneath the splitter, but what we're gonna do is drill this out. This They normally come with a quarter 20 thread. We're just gonna drill that out so the bolt passes straight through, and we're gonna countersink it, so that way we can use a flathead bolt. So that whole setup will go from underneath 
almost like that. That will come down from top and then we can use a nylock nut on it because last thing we want is this thing vibrating loose or coming loose or anything like that. So that's how we're going to set this up. Nice and flush under, nice and flush underneath the car. So we can just gotta do two more. All right, so the splitter rods, super happy with how they turned out. Last thing we're gonna take a peek at is the bump stops. And if you remember just a little bit ago, I knew I was cutting it close with about a quarter inch of suspension travel. So let's look at that real quick. So there's the bump stop and the top of the strut. And as you can see, that's probably only about, only about a quarter of an inch. So yeah, so this is um, kind of a little bit of a new new territory for us. Uh, thanks again to Will for kind of, you know, letting me know I'm on the right track with the whole bump stop thing. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, while the car was in the air, uh, checked brakes, checked a few other things, gonna blow out the radiator. That's really about it, we're ready to load up. All right, so last thing we need to do is clearance the holes in the bumper cover. Pretty simply, we use a silver sharpie, obviously easier to see on carbon fiber, um, and one of these little reamer bits. I don't know if that's going to show up or not, but um, yeah, we're just going to put it up, kind of mark out how much we need to go, clearance it, and that's it. Uh, this should be pretty quick. All right, so here it is, all finished up. I'm not even gonna bother painting these because the, the clevises are coming. Here's our little quick pin setup, so that way we can take that pin out, drop these down, pull the bumper off, pull the splitter off in a matter of a minute or two. Um, but yeah, you saw me jumping on it. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. Again, the little slotted sleeve bit, you can kind of see I'm lifting up on the splitter right now. Gives you that little bit of gib just in case. Alright guys, so that's it for this one. Uh, bump stops and splitter rods to try and keep the splitter from hitting the ground. If we can get the splitter closer to the ground without hitting the ground, that's pretty much like the win-win what we're going for. We're going to go ahead and load up because we're racing tomorrow. Um, so yeah, as always, thanks for hanging out. If you want to see how these worked out, if the bump stops are good, if the splitter rods work out, please hit that subscribe button to follow along for all the future updates. And I'll see you guys in the next one.